Hey everybody, it's Jason Creel and this is the Lawn Care Life. Today I'm going over seven overly used landscaping plants that I still like to have in my own yard. Okay, so stuff that you just see way too much probably gets used way too much, but I just like it. Now, not all of them are I'm gonna fit that category. For instance, I've got where I just, I don't care for the knockout roses as, as much as I used to. And they're definitely overused, but I've got some others and I'm gonna mention this video, no particular order. So let's get started with those right now. All right, number one. And my landscaping is a work in progress. So uh, pardon the progress here as we not have any mulch or pine straw down right now. Number one, the limelight hydrangeas. These have just become super popular. And this one's kind of fading out as we get late in the summer. Um, but I like limelight hydrangeas. I've seen some that just get way overgrown, so I do think it's probably a good practice to prune them regularly. Um, I'm gonna probably let this one go maybe this year since it's, I just planted it. But maybe after this year, I'm gonna start pruning it back each year. Number two, lantana. I like this lantana. We're in uh, the Birmingham, Alabama market, and it comes back pretty much every year. It gets huge, um, but it, it just you know has so many blooms on it, and it lasts for months and months and months. So even though lantana is very common, it's one that I just particularly like. Number three, lorpedalum. Lorpedalums are extremely common, at least in my area. But I tell you what I like about them, they're, they're very hardy, very easy to grow. They do have blooms on them early in the year, these bright pink blooms. They grow, uh, there's different varieties from all the way, you know, that grow like one to two feet tall up to like 12 feet tall for some of the larger varieties. Um, they're not super high maintenance. You don't have to prune them, you know, that often, maybe once or twice a year. Uh, but you can maintain them the shape and size that you want. And I mean, what other plants are there that's gonna give you, you know, uh, it's just hard to find good plants other than green plants, you know? So to get the purple color, something different than green, I don't know of a better option than a lower petalum. So I, I really I enjoy that in my landscape. Number four, I'm gonna go with the old Arborvita here. And this one, uh, I buy them a lot of times, small, like one gallon or something, just to get them cheaper. But you can see, to me, they, they are overused, um, but I love that they're, they're evergreens. I love them on the corner of a house like we have here. And they do get quite tall. I did, somebody showed me a trick one time. Sometimes they'll start splitting at the top. And somebody, you know, they, they said you can actually take like a little zip tie, uh, probably something else, and hold it together there if you want to keep that, that nice point at the top. Um, but, you know, this, is uh, one type of arborvita. I'm gonna show you the other. I've got the green giant arborvita, which I also love. And, um, but anyway, I, I just got where I love evergreen plants and trees. And this is one I think still, in my opinion, makes a great corner shrub. Now on the other side of my house on the corner, I've got a little gem magnolia and I really like it as well. Now here's the green giant arborvita. I've got probably 30 of these planted on my property. Uh, these get really big. Uh, this one is, is maybe eight feet tall. They get, I don't know, maybe 40 feet tall and close to 10 feet wide. Make a great privacy screen, but I like the shape of them. People do sometimes use them for Christmas trees. Um, but anyway, different purpose. I wouldn't necessarily plant this right beside my house, plant the other variety there, but for privacy or open spa spaces or just something that, you know, standalone plant, it, to me, they look great. I love. Uh, supposedly more disease resistant than some of the other uh, large privacy screening plants. So definitely a great choice. Number five, mine's still young. I've got a couple of these on my property, different varieties, but Japanese maple. Now when this thing uh, gets a little taller, my neighbor gave me this one. It's grown a lot this year. But um, when it gets taller, I, I think it's gonna be a beautiful plant. I like to see it putting out a little bit of new growth here, so that's good. Let's see, these things are, the shape of the tree is great. The, the leaf color is great. You got the red varieties, green varieties, different leaf shapes, lots to choose from. I've got another green variety, one that's very small too. Um, but I'm just, you know, I'm here at my property and it's hopefully gonna be here for a long time. So I'm, I'm willing to wait on a young tree like this to get 
larger over the next few years and really be uh, a pretty tree to look at. Number six, I'm going to go with the Encore Azalea. This one's not blooming at the moment, but you know I, do, I know these are used a lot. But to me, azaleas are still a great option when you've got shade or partial shade. And nothing wrong with just uh, more traditional azaleas that look beautiful in the springtime, but I just think these are worth a little bit extra money because they bloom so often throughout the year. So a uh, great option for uh, planting in mass groupings, in my opinion. Uh, to me, you don't always have to mix it up. You can just plant the same plant over and over again in large groupings and they look great. Again, not making my list are the knockout roses. I don't know, sometimes I feel like they just grow too fast, you gotta prune them too much. Yes, they have great flowers, but I, I don't know. I've just kinda gotten over them. I still have them in my house, but I'm not, not crazy about them anymore. And last but not least, I'm going with the elephant ears. These are actually taller than I am. These are huge. And uh, I don't know, they look like they're about seven feet tall. You see, maybe eight feet. The top, so at the top of that building is probably eight feet. So they're almost eight feet tall. And really, I've got several different varieties. This is the biggest variety I have. Um, do have some other ones. Let me see if I can find one over here that I wanted to show you. These are the same old gigantic ones. But I do have a I do have an upright variety in here somewhere. It may be getting covered up and not getting enough sunlight due to all the other monsters growing over here. So what I'm gonna do next year, I'm gonna probably have to divide some of these up and uh, give them away or maybe even sell some of them. So I'm not sure. Um, anyway, there is an upright one in there somewhere, but it might be mixed up. These are some of those angel trumpet plants that are also mixed in here. So I, I gotta do some serious work on thinning this out because these big boys i wanted them to be huge but they got bigger than i thought you can got a little banana tree here might need to move it too so a lot of things that need to happen appreciate you watching the video i'm jason creel i'm in the lawn care business if you're thinking about starting a lawn care business you can go to uh, lawncarelife.com there's a lot of resources available for you there or subscribe to the channel leave me a comment there's over 600 lawn care videos on the channel I talk a lot about mowing talk a lot about weed control how to make your lawn look better how to grow a successful lawn care business so i would encourage you to subscribe and i will talk to you guys later bye